Welcome to uh, Flint For Real with Shane Hodges. Today, my special guest is County Commissioner Jamie Curtis. Thanks so much for coming. It's good to have you. And uh, today we want to talk about some of the things that are happening in our community, some of the issues and some of the solutions to the problems that we're facing because every day is something new and the water is getting better, but we're on our way. So. We are on our way. First, I want to thank you. Um, let's talk about the, the most uh, uh, you know, important subject uh, facing everybody right today, and that's the water. Uh, I've been blessed to uh, be on the Flint Water Interagency panel with Mayor Weaver and her appointees. And um, so I'm real excited about that because I work closely with the city of Flint. Uh, I've, I've pledged to the mayor that she has my unconditional support in anything I can do for her. And today in our meeting, which is live stream and we had media there, uh, Dr. Uh, Mona Hanna Atisha and Dr. Reynolds and Mark Edwards and another doctor, um, they're on a subcommittee to talk about the health aspects of it. And basically they have brought to get forward a proposal that uh, supersedes the lead and copper rules for the federal government. And, if, and they're going to take this to the legislature of Michigan and have it adopted and passed and it lowers the standards way lower uh, that's acceptable today okay. for the federal level uh, they propose 10 it's 15 we uh, made some comments in there that it should go to five right um, but the most important thing is the way uh, people think uh, at the legislature and when they draft things is they they put it on the community to make it happen, okay? Right, right. And, and a community like Flint that should never have been in this situation to begin right, with right. Uh, needs to be the model city. Yes, so, exactly. So in order to be compliant of what they propose, it's millions of dollars to get there. So if they adopt it in the form that it is, and then expect Flint to, to reach that compliant level on right. their own, it's put on the backs of the citizens of Flint. Uh, Flint right, Michigan. right. So I'm opposed to that. I had, uh, I had, I had spoken to the mayor's, uh, she's got a, a general that's working for her on her fast start. We're putting mm -hmm. lead lines in. And I said, we should push in, for a resolution here at this committee that when this goes to the legislation to be adopted that Flint, Michigan is the model and it is 100% compliant of these regs before they ever vote on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and because the state owes the people yeah, in Flint. Yeah, as much. Yeah, that's the problem. You know, highest you just got quality to. quality of water at the lowest affordable cost. Right, right. That is, and you know, it's been such a, it was an odd situation and it's been in the works for years. The, the whole water situation, Detroit Waters, you know, their whole situation, Great Lakes Authority and all the things that have happened. You know, it's been, and since this whole water crisis has started, it, there's been so much. And a lot of it has been, like you said, taken out on the people. Because a lot of people feel there a lot of help came. And, you know, bottled water and filters are in every home. But that was just, you know, that's it. That's as far as the people got, you know, and, and that's one of the things we spoke about, the resources out there. And there are a lot of resources, but most people don't know about them or they're just one of the big problems in our city is digital divide as far as homes having access to the Internet and even watching TV. Some places don't have, you know, TVs in the home. So there's a big it's just crazy that this little city inside all these resources that are around, because there's so many, is just doing so bad. Like, you know, we look at the neighborhoods like, how? How could it be this way, you know? Right. I, a lot of it is, uh, if, if you, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Right, you look right, back and right. see it. But going forward, if, if, if the viewers out there have a problem, have an issue, uh, now or in the immediate future, please call 211. Yeah. And two one one 
is, is constant contact with the emergency operations center locally to make sure that you get directed to the services you need. Uh, we're working very hard, the city of Flint is, and the county to make sure, because so many of our inner city folks don't have transportation. Right, right. So we're trying to coordinate and make available with MTA where they have the ability to be mobile and go around. They have created these mobile food trucks. I've seen those. And, yeah. uh, and hopefully as summer ramps up, they'll be able to get the very fresh nutritionist food uh, right out their doorstep and on, right. on routes that uh, right. uh, are the hardest reached for the people uh, that don't have the transportation. Can you imagine a mother right. Right. going out and using public transportation to go to the doctor is one thing, but to take your child or try to go right. to a pod to get a case water. of water. Ca carrying water yeah, on the yeah. bus. Or imagine being, you know, and the disabled people being in a wheelchair. How are you going to pick a case up? You know, there's so many people that are just, there's a big combustion in the middle. Because I, you know, I volunteer for Mayor Weaver at City Hall front desk with the filters, the water test kits. And I see a lot of people coming in. A lot of people came for all the resources, but that seemed like that was everything. Well, we're there. working very hard, and that's why that two one one number. Yeah, so it, it is very effective, and, and that's we will send, what we are we will to send get out. out. Matter of fact, the lieutenant that's stationed, who's over this district, uh, does a phenomenal job. Her name is uh, Lieutenant Roach. She's in the county building in the ELC. Uh, okay. There's a uh, a lady who uh, is uh, hearing impaired, and she has a uh, automated translation yeah. where she can speak to her and uh, so uh, she reached out to 211 got to the got EOC to and yesterday uh, Lieutenant Roach took her uh, some water and a filter and put it on for her okay. and everything and uh, she she lives in in you know the Flint public housing and so okay. Okay. Um, we definitely want to be able to help each and every person and we want them to know how to right. get the help right that's the important and, uh, part and it shouldn't be more than 24 hours from the time that they call to the time they get to service right and so um, I go to the EOC uh, probably four times a day on my way in work on my way out of work uh, on my way to lunch and on my way back to lunch because I want to remove any barriers or roadblocks that are our citizens are faced yeah, with. Definitely, because you know, Flint is the county seat. As Flint goes, Genesee County, it, you know, we're all in this together. That's what, that's one of the, the things, all the resources are here, the county, the local, everybody's together. We just, you know, a little bit more cohesion. As far as like, I, the, today I was with the uh, Flint police chief and the cooperation from all the agencies there's no way we should have crime like this. With all these agencies here, two universities, they because they kind of look like cops to me. You know, the the school they police. Do, they do. They do. I mean, Kettering, U of M, all right. Ma, Ma, they, have, they all have their own policing agencies. Right. And they, I mean. I have, I have come through neighborhoods and seen the, the college security. But they're, you know, all these agencies, if we all work together, we have enough to take care of each other. That's basically what exactly. I'm saying. With we the have state plenty. police here, you know, the, the, the sheriff department is not funded uh, road patrol. Right. Uh, they, they contract out in the burbs, but. But we have enough units in right. need to back up that we should be able to. But I agree with you. Right. We have resources. We don't need to ask people for more money for this. Right, right. We need to do a better job of being efficient at the resources we have and the collaboration. Yeah. Because we are a community of one. Yeah. You know, I, I don't represent uh, by borders. And right. I represent in the 3rd District, Burton and Genesee Township and Flint. But you know what? I look at this thing as a as a one community, right. Genesee County. Yeah. I grew up here. I'm 60 yeah. years old. This has yeah, been my home for for all of my life. I love it here. Uh, I've not left because right. it's I, some, I want to make the it better. Places. I know what it was when I was growing up as a boy, and I want to bring it back. And yeah. you know what's missing is uh, you know 
it costs thirty-five thousand dollars a year to to uh, incarcerate somebody, you know, in prison for a year. And people say, well, you know, uh, we can't afford to uh, invest in our youth. Why? The schools right. are there. Right. The gyms right. are there. The ball diamonds are there. Yeah. Um, it's cheaper to invest that way yeah. than not give them structured time right. to use their idle time yeah. uh, and and then take the wrong path and end up in, into the right. prison system. It's cra it's it, it's just crazy the way in Flint the schools we used to you remember we had all the high schools people from all over the world came in to look at our high schools because they were the best in the, the country. Very best. In right. Flint and our surrounding areas, we've had good schools forever. But and it's just to see it this way. Like when I was growing up in the '90s, it was good. Still, we still had a lot of students, and it just—it's like wow. Like you said, so many things happen, so many variables, and wow, it's just—and it shouldn't be that way because we're we're more advanced, we're smarter, we're we're faster, we're better. There's so many new things, but. Yeah, you know, we're doing worse than we did before. Yeah, it's just, you know, things change. And, and of course, the jobs and the unions and all that leaving that just hurt. But there's there's so many tough decisions that are made. Well, we've, you know, we've, we've, made, some, we've made some good decisions, too. Um, I always call it um, at the county, I refer to it as uh, the county board of commissioners strive for long-term sustainability. Uh, try to control the fixed cost of the county uh, to sustain long-term uh, sustainability. And there's been uh, some great investments. Uh, there's been investments through our treasurer who uh, manages the land bank and eliminated the blight and, and used that money for Hardisett. And it's probably the model in the state for, for, for beginning to end in that program right. better than any any other uh, city in uh, Michigan. Uh, the KWA water line created 1,100 jobs mm -hmm. and uh, that came to fruition uh, for two good reasons. Uh, double digit rate increase cost uh, year after year from Detroit in reliability. Mm -hmm. uh, there is documentation you can Google it, you can look on Free Press, Detroit News, that there was a, a, a since the 2004 brownout, remember mm -hmm. that, the mm -hmm. East Coast? Mm -hmm. they, they Even Detroit realized at that point in time, yeah. 250,000 people up here would be without water. Right. Uh, and we were for three, four yeah. days. Yeah. And so they said, you know, we need reliability. So they did a $28 million engineering study to build their line which was running 850 million dollars right. and all the users were going to pay for it. well we just are close to finishing up yeah. a water line that cost less than 300 million uh, under budget and on time right. it will be it will be the, the highest quality water at the lowest affordable cost in the whole Midwest. Yes, yes. And now, and if in fact, going with that, as it comes along and is being completed, the county is having its water plant. Yes. And that and that's one of the big concerns in Flint is our water plant. Is it up to par? Because eventually, didn't I see some recently where you're going to have to connect to that water pipeline, the Flint water plant? The, the, or? Way, it, the way it was... It is right now. It's connected to your water treatment plant all the way back out to the uh, uh, the county's water treatment plant. And then okay. from there, there's about six to eight miles of pipe in it. But since the uh, mishap and, and yeah. the, the, you know, the, the water crisis that was created by not properly treating the Flint River, uh, the EPA this water agency board that the mayor yeah. and I are on, we are not ever, ever, ever going to let any water go through that water treatment plant, uh, whether it be KWA right. water uh, or DWSD water right. or any water without uh, a 90 day uh, thorough uh, testing, not only how good it is coming out of the plant, right. but sustainability 
because the infrastructure is so old and flint that yeah. what they have is they have some pooling mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and, and it's stagnant and it sits in the pipe and it, yeah. and it doesn't get going and, and that's not good. No. So, so those, those tests need to be done on that infrastructure yes. and so that, that process needs to be done and fixed. The, the water treatment plant, they've hired a new F1 manager. I've seen that. I was and she announced conference. today, the mayor announced today, that they also hired uh, uh, some more operators or some degreed engineers that run the plant and, okay. uh, and soon will be staff. making an offer. Yeah. So sh she's in the process of getting top quality people right. to right. run that water right. plant uh, and make sure that she has more than enough expertise to run that plan and thoroughly and then uh, so the EPA, the DEQ, the, the mayor uh, of Flint and all of us on that on that board are going to make sure that nothing right. nothing ever happens like this again right. with and that water. That, that is you know and, and that's what someone said to me too we went from barely monitor to the best in the country the EPA and all the people that are on. I know Cup Wayne State professor that's doing it, Mark Edwards, all these people are watching. You know, and it's and, and that's the scary part. Now think what you just said about this system pooling. They're telling us right now that they want to flush it and open it all up. Now imagine what that's going to release into the Flint system all those pooled spots and that's been a concern of mine as as a parent because i got three little ones the orthophosphates that they're trying to heal the pipes with imagine that water which or you know that makes things grow it comes into those pools with that water growing stuff already and that's you know some of the things with maybe the rashes and the concerns now and it's just moving forward you know when is the end? That's this water crisis is still ongoing, and we still, you know, it is have to ongoing. Be in in Genesee County Board of Commissioners, uh, in concert with Mark Valachek, the Health Department, we declared the emergency yeah. October first. Do not drink the water. It's our emergency in place. Do yes. not drink the water, and that emergency is not going to be lifted by us until we're assured that those. Uh, infrastructure problems oh, that has are been fixed. Tested. Yes. And and the reason I'm not a water expert right, and, right. but when Mark Edwards uh, makes a recommendation to do these flushes to to get it okay. healed better if you right. would then uh, I, I believe somewhere along the line we There's have science to, behind we it. have to look at his science behind yeah, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I still uh, support unconditionally every water line from the main to the home uh, that's lead or or right. uh, it galvanized right. be replaced be replaced it needs to be replaced yeah. we need that new infrastructure in place yeah. um, uh, the schools everything this has to the be a fixtures. model city yeah yeah this it, has exactly. to be the model city and like i said we went over a draft today to to one up the federal regulations in the state of michigan and i had a sidebar with the city of flint folks and i said i support this providing that the state makes sure that flint is the model city and is 100 percent compliant yeah. meaning yeah. we have almost no detection and that's right. what we should strive yeah. for no yeah. detection no detect, of, not of, detect. of lead at when whatsoever in our water and uh and accept nothing less right we did not ask for this to happen no it happened we can move on from there yeah. but you know what I, I i tell you what i mean you cannot expect the city of flint residents to continue to live off bottle and, water. and pay for it though and you know one of the things the numbers that has escaped they said two-thirds of the people continue to pay their bills and are current you know everyone paid for it. we understand our city circumstances that's supporting the city basically but it's just been hard and like you said think about it it's getting nice the the, the donations we're not in national news anymore the donations are starting to 
Levy out. I think the food bank said they had five semis a day at one time coming in there. I don't know where they're at now, but it, we have to do something. We have to move on and grow as a community and not just be stuck you know is this victim we have to you know be proactive and one of my goals and things that I believe is if we have an educated community people who know what they're doing and what's going on then they may have a better chance of changing it being a part of that change because that's where it's going to start the people well, well let me tell you what if it hadn't been for the people right definitely like yourself and many others that a will lot of many people because right I there's will so leave many somebody out yes but the resilient yeah. Flint resident rising up, refusing to be ignored, yeah. is is what turned this whole thing around. Yeah. And God bless every one of them because that's what needed to happen, and they did it. And and the elected officials the are not came together, not right. going to accept something short of right. having it. Exactly, uh, you know, it's hard right. to use the word perfect, but right. we're, we're going to strive candy. for right. uh, right. the perfect model city before anybody pulls And county out. and community, all together community, yeah. all the outlying communities, we all have to, you know, when these situations come, because, you know, we're on earth, things Absolutely. happen, you know, it's just some of the, It's it's been a good effort, and, you know, the people involved, and I really, uh, it has been amazing to see such the traction it took. You know, it took a while, two years. A lot of people at city council, those meetings, and some of the same faces have been fighting. But, you know, there have been some real warriors and heroes. Like the mayor, I was with her through her campaign. And, you know. If it wasn't for those warriors yeah. and, and the mayor. She um, did it. That, you know, it she, That's what I tell people. Look absolutely. around your house. Look at your filter on your sink and look at your stack of bottled water because. Karen Weaver did it. She did. she did it. She won and did it right up there. She wouldn't take no for an answer, and everyone rallied with her. It was she good. did. It. I mean, you know, I didn't know uh, uh, Dr. Weaver, and and soon after she got elected, I, I I went over and introduced myself, and and her first her first declaration was a uh, one page, you know, mm -hmm. but I knew uh, that they would shoot that down because I know how the system is. The system right. is, you know, follow your ABCs and if you don't right. do it. And, right. and, and listen, nobody in Flint, Michigan needed that. And, then, right. and nobody needed to right. have that happen because emotions were running high. Yes. So you can see the, the press releases from Mayor Weaver mm -hmm. where her and I worked together on yep, the incident definitely. plan. Yep. And, and we merged uh, what she needed from the city. And, and then I brought into the health aspect of the health department and, and, and right. those things yeah. and and, and it's, it's a great incident plan yes. Yes. she did a fabulous job we did uh, it fast too didn't we yes. we were in there we did it absolutely got it we signed got january 4th january 5th uh, uh the the governor signed it uh she she's been a true leader in all of this i do want to talk just a little bit about the money because people do ask me, you know, yeah. I don't want one dime to to that that is headed for Flint, Michigan, right. out of this whole thing. Right. So I hope the viewers understand that the money that the county has spent a million two yeah. is money that we're one community. Remember, yeah. we didn't have either right. to handle this emergency. Right. So let's. Let's have the people responsible for yeah. putting us in this crisis. Definitely. Pay for it. And those people are the state of Michigan. Yeah. yeah. So so the money that we spent is documented, but we need that money because because if we have to lay off people that provide health services right, right. for when our residents of Flint go to our health department, then it becomes problematic, and that shouldn't happen. Right. So we want to be made whole for that. We're not asking for more than that. We're just asking to be made whole for that because we want to continue to be able to provide those services. On a, on a positive note, right. not the state, but the federal government has brought money to the community, yes, Genesee yes. County Health Department. We've added resources uh, with people. Yes. Uh, we've identified, we're working with the federal, uh, Dr. Lori's in town today, uh, seen her this morning. So 
they brought money. We, we have uh, added more people in the health department to help with uh, with the right. needs of the people. Right. Uh, early Head Start at GC Card. They brought money there. We bought three Chevrolet Traverses. Oh, now, wow. why did we buy three Chevrolet Traverses? Because I talked about it earlier in the program. We have young mothers, mothers. Uh, we have seniors. We have folks that have to use public transportation. Yeah. And so we need to pick them up and take them to the doctor. Yeah. Uh, we need to take them by the pod and pick up their water and their water filter. Yeah. And they can't get on a bus. Yeah. So, so we used the money and we bought three Chevy Traverses so that we can have, and what we like to do because we like to have uh, continuity of care. So we want to make sure that if you're in our program and having our services, that you get to see and become familiar with that same face. Yeah. Because uh, Shane, if it's you or me, and, and we're working right. with somebody, and it's us going to their home to check on them and yeah. making sure everything, yeah. you build a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if we haven't heard from you in a while, we're going to check on you. We're going to call you and we're going to make sure you're Yeah, okay. definitely. And, and that's very, very important. And that's the types of programs that we're trying to embrace for our folks in Flint, Michigan, uh, so that we have that yeah. quality care. Very good resource for the community too. Yeah, and that's that's what it takes. We are a community, so you know it's it's been really good talking to you. And this, you know, I have a feeling this is going to be a great summer, a great year. You know, there's so many things going on, and you know, the city of Flint, it, I feel like it needs to come back. And we're still a city, we're still living, we have problems with the water, but we're going to move past it and grow and be exciting and live, you know, have, best we can in a good community. I think it's possible. There's a lot of strong people in Flint and around Flint that really care about Flint. So I think we can do it. Do good things. You know, an educated population is a strong population. So I, I really believe in... Uh, sharing the news and that it was great talking to you thanks for coming and uh oh thank you for we'll having you me next and time. I, I will come anytime you okay want definitely we'll maybe i would like to do maybe like a panel show or something have a couple people like uh -huh. maybe i'm trying to get mayor weaver she came in before but just you know a little political people in our area get the community familiar with the people you can reach out to you know your people your elected officials a lot of people are like who's the you know third district county commissioner i don't know you live there that's your representation right to the resource it's it's definitely you know and you know <clears throat> local government right. the city of flint township county is the most important yes, is. government yes, to our citizens you know that we have a presidential race going on we have congress and senators and all that but you know what the day-to-day -day resources the the day-to-day -day yeah. effects of your life your water your sewer your garbage pickup yeah. everything your street lights your your potholes everything is local government and and that's that's you know, so sad, you know, what I see from an elected official is because uh, the resources and the connection to the community, uh, county government is so ill-defined. We don't have right. a county exec. Right. We don't have a county manager. We have nine commissioners by state statute are part-time. Now, I've been blessed to be the chairman for seven yes. years during the greatest recession yes. in now, our lifetime. aren't you the chairman of the KWA as well? I'm the vice chair. Vice that. chair, that's right. But, uh, you yeah. know, when I took uh, and was honored to be uh, the chairman in 2010, we're in a recession. We're right. still in a recession, the way it works in, in this uh, state. And I'm, I want to briefly explain that. Uh, but we had $600,000 unassigned fund balance. $250,000 a day to pay our people uh, and we struggle to fight back but we 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 strive as a board for sustainability and long-term sustainability and we have managed to to keep our bond rating at whole so that we were able to do the KWA project that, that we were able to to fund and help right, give seed right. money to the land bank to take down all the blighted homes yes we're, we're, there's more new money that that came this year and we're doing that uh, we were able to uh, 
uh, spend NSP dollars to to renovate and rehab and make affordable housing for our, our folks in the city. Yes. Uh, and partner with the city through our Genesee County Metropolitan Planning Commission. Uh, there's there's very there's so very much. many many good things happening, and uh, you know I urge everybody you know uh, come down. Uh, I'm there from seven in the morning. The office opens at eight until after five. I'm I'm always available. Uh, you reached out to me. Yep, I returned my calls. Yep. Yes, he does. Uh, Very responsive. It, it, it takes you know within twenty four thirty six hours, depending on where it is. But I reach back yep. to the people that call me, and uh, sometimes I can help, and sometimes I can only redirect. Right. Yeah. But but I I Steering I just right love direction. serving. Uh, the people in this community, and, and I'm going to uh, continue to do that for as long as they elect me, and I'm up for re-election this year, right, and, right. and I look forward to the campaigning yeah, and meeting the people and, and yeah, continue probably. to work hard for them. Yeah, that's good. Good luck. We, we hope we'll get you back after you win and the new go forward. And Appreciate it very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jane. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Very, very good. Hey,